Hi everyone, I think we're up and live. If somebody wouldn't mind typing something into the chat. So fingers crossed it's working this month. Whilst I'm waiting for that, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can carve little, see that, little, little sweet things out of off cuts from your workshop. So I'll be working with this little bird today. And like always, if you head to my website, there is a downloadable PDF for the pattern there. All right, so to prove that it's a genuine off cut, you can see it's a failed carving and I'd already done a bit of a mistake there. So this is a pure off cut straight from my bandsaw bin. This is a little bit of American walnut, carves really nicely. I'm going to flip the computer screen down now and we can get going. There we go. So one of the difficulties with securing small pieces like this one is how do you mount so they stay still and in place whilst you're working. On the back of this, I've got double-sided tape. Now, I don't know what brand tape this is. It's an old, old roll from the depths of my workshop. Not all double-sided tapes will work. Some do, some don't. Um, something else that's really good to think about is if you don't have double-sided tape and you're willing to wait a day, you can, I'll show you on the other one, do a paper chuck method, which is just simply... I always use computer paper, don't use newspaper. Just with PVA, one coat there, one sheet of paper, another coat of glue, another sheet of paper, glue on the back. So then you've got two layers of paper, glue it onto your work surface and clamp overnight. <coughs> Excuse me. And then after you finish carving, you can separate that with a knife. And that's a paper chuck method. But because I often like to come up with an idea and get stuck straight in, I'm too impatient to wait overnight, so I go the double-sided tape method. So just double-sided tape on the back of that. Peel that off. Tiny bit there. Onto my block. And I always like to just really... Just give it a whack with your mallet. Keep it down. And today, if you don't have one at home, you don't have to use it, but I'm going to use a Veritas carving vise. I love them for little pieces because I tend to sort of spin them around a lot. So I can just really, I can spin it different angles. And if I release this, I can tilt like that and like that. So I just find it really easy. Now, so we're going to turn this chunk of a bird here into a, there's a light, sweet little guy like that there. Currently it's far too thick. Let me release that. So I'm going to start by reducing the thickness. For that, I'm going to be using a field gouge. 3F20, as I've said before, the three refers to the sweep. The F is because it's a fishtail, so it fans out like that. And the 20 is 20 mils wide. Now this is the test to see how good the double-sided tape is as well. My grain is running like that. I might draw a line so you guys can. So that's my grain direction. I'm just splitting it off like this. So I'm just working at reducing the overall height. Oh, and sorry, I should have started by saying, I cut this little shape here out on the bandsaw um, you can also use a scroll saw, or if you don't have those, just use a coping saw. 
and you'll get your little shape cut out. But at the moment, I'm just reducing the height. This would be a really fiddly size piece of timber to try and, you know, way too small to put through the thicknesser. A little fiddly on the bandsaw. So we'll just do it by hand. And then it's quite rough there. Move that lamp. So now I'm just going to use a sweeping action. Come like that. Please, if anyone has any questions, pop them in the chat. Hopefully I will be able to answer you. So I'm just smoothing off the top so that I've got an even work base to start carving some bird detail. So you can see, I'm going to that a little bit more. See that? Nice and smooth. So next I'm going to reduce this, this back wing here, which is, sorry, that light's a bit tricky. That wing there, going to reduce that, take that right down and start to add a lot of this shape. This bird and this bird will be flying towards each other like that. So it's a mirror image of this one. So that comes down like that. Draw a bit of that there. Now, because you've got a little curve in here, if you guys can't see the angle that's at, please say so. Find a gouge that fits that curve. I'm going to be using a number seven sweep F fishtail, two mils wide. I like the fishtails for little carvings because they're much easier to get into the points because you haven't got the entire shaft coming up there. So here I'm cutting across the grain. I'm just going to go gentle because I don't have much wood at all. I've taken this down to probably about 8 to 10 mils thick, I'd say. Using something a little flatter in just get my, well, actually I'm going to spin that. Follow the curves there properly. Olivia. Oh, now I want to reduce this wing here. So I'm going to come in with this little guy and just, actually I'm going to upgrade. So I'm still essentially splitting along that grain, really reducing the height of this back wing. This is where these vices are great. I can spin it and come in to that edge of the wing there. But if you don't have one, you can just sort of do this onto a piece of ply, like a much larger piece of plywood and clamp that onto your bench. So if you remember from previous live streams, if you've joined in, I'm just doing a wedge cut into what was a stop cut. Now there where it's not breaking off, clearly my stop cut wasn't deep enough. So I'm going to come back. Just increase that depth. I'm going really gently here because, as you can see, it's a little, little carving and I want to keep it in one piece. I don't want to split any part off. So I'm just going to use my little gouge okay, to come into that. Now, 
Now you can see I'm kind of 45 degrees to that grain direction there. I might draw this, this side as well for you. That's my grain direction. Again, I just got a few dags. I'll ignore those for the time being. Cut those off, coming straight down and in there. Now I'll flip. This is a lot easier to undo, but normally I would be on that side of the bench, but today I'm here. So I'm doing a bit of stretching so that you guys can hopefully see this little, little thing we're carving. See, I've dropped the height of that about halfway. So next I want to add some shape definition to this big wing. Just going to draw... Looking at my template for reference, I'm just going to draw that. This is the high point of my entire carving. Now, when you're using, when you're doing little carvings, it's often really good. It's strange, but you'll have more control using a mallet. I don't think the mallet will make it in screen, but you'll be able to hear it. Rather than if I was to do hand pressure like that, I lose a bit of consistency, I suppose is the right word. So again, I'm resting on the ball of my hand there. I'm just going to tap along. Twisting my whole body around to follow that curve. Hoping the lamp doesn't fall off the table. I'm working from a tiny uh, portable workbench because I still don't have very good internet in the shed. So if I want to guarantee making it through one of these, I've had to take my workbench, my little portable workbench, pack it up, take it home, and coming to you from my kitchen. So do you see that wiggling there that I'm doing? I feel a little bit of flaky grain. I'm kind of pushing against it as well. That wiggle, using a V tool there, that wiggle, each wiggle like that, each sort of rock is a fresh cut, so it gives you a lot of control forces you to go slow, but you can really get out of difficulty there. Next, I'm going to be using that number 710 and just cleaning a lot of this out. Time for a spin. Now, if you watched the grain direction uh, stream last month, you'll know that because the grain is running like that, I'm going to cut the tops of it off like this rather than down there. And if that doesn't make sense to you, uh, please go back and watch last month's live stream. Now I want to remove a lot of waste off this edge here of that wing. I really want to drop the depth of that. So I'm using my wider gouge again. Hope you guys can hear how nicely that's cutting. Using a corner of a tool. That probably needs to come down a little bit more. Now, can you see I'm actually rocking that? 
rocking that tool. Especially here, sounding so nice because I'm slicing off end grain right in there. So I'm really twisting it to make sure I'm slicing and not just butting into anything or ripping. I'm going to take it deeper this side than this point up here because I want the wing to kind of be coming up a little bit at the end. So there's so much to think about in just a little carving. I need to add, see this original here? You see in the light? This little notch in here. It's doing my head in because it's a reverse image. Let me spin it towards myself. Yep. Cool. So to get that, I'm just going to push at it with my VTOL. Really wiggling it to control that cut and get it really deep. Whilst I'm working on the tail, I'm going to drop the height of that drastically. So really just wedge that out. Drop that wing because that wing goes behind the body. Lots of backwards and forwards in here today. And that's why I actually have all of my gouges color coded to yellow and blue. So if I'm working on a big project and I have a lot of tools rather than using just four and wood chips everywhere, I can quickly find the tool I'm after rather than spending minutes searching for it. I'm like, oh, I know I need a green one. Now, I think I'm gonna just drop that tail just a tiny bit more. So see, it's still twisting. Now I want to round this body a little bit, give that a bit of shape. When my grain running that way, this is essentially a curve. So I'm going to be working bevel side up, just on this edge of that curve. When you're doing curve shapes, I really like, if possible, to work bevel side up. Because already it's such an advantage because you're already rounding everything for you. Spin around. I'm going to just carve the top of his head back. Look at that tool super sharp because just on that edge I'm going against the grain. Just using the edge of that tool to really kind of take those pointed facets off and so round around the top of that. Is anybody else impressed that that double-sided tape is holding? I always am. Next, I'm gonna just round this top edge of that big wing there. So again, my grain running like that, I'm gonna slice the tops of those fibers off rather than coming into them. So come from this direction. Now here, because the grain runs 90 degrees to my edge, I'm just going to see how I'm really exaggerating that, that rock and that slice down. So it's a much shorter cut. So 
that's a little big now. Onto a small one. If anyone has any questions about this or things you'd like to see in future live streams, please just pop them in the chat. In the not too distant future, we will also be doing um, carving in the round and using rasps, which was a request from last month. So I'm just trying to round out his whole body. You can see there's lots of sort of jumping around. Like, oh, I'll reduce that, reduce that. Lots of spinning. I'm going to come back with my V tool and just this time I'm going to use hand pressure because I've already controlled the shape my first pass through using the mallet. Yeah, I really shouldn't cut that in that direction. If you wanted, you could turn this into a necklace by drilling some holes in the back. Or I've made brooches. Um, just using a two-part epoxy resin glue, you can glue a brooch fastening onto the back there. Again, because I'm going really slicing down to get around that grain there. Alrighty, now we're starting to get some shape in. Just going to fuss around and just round all of the edges. So there'll be a lot of spinning. that edge off there. <sighs> All right, got a bit of rounding out to the tail. The background wings, so this guy here. You can see it's got a bit of shape and definition and feathers. Sorry, these lamps are making life tricky, aren't they? So we're just going to shape out this back wing here. So I just draw my line. Spin again. Beetle. Mallet, you won't see it, but I'm sure you'll hear it. Hope you'll hear it, because if you can't hear that, you can't hear me. Just tapping out along that line. Until I hit into that body there. Just going to notch that back. Just going to do a second pass by hand this time. I'm trying to cut the waist side only, so I've tilted my VTOL here a little bit. I just have a tiny dag in there, so I'm just going to cut it off. 
that guy. Okay, so now I need to reduce the height of that. I'm gonna just wheeling it from side to side to give it a little cut. I don't need to use a heap of mallet pressure because this is getting pretty thin now. And you've probably already realized, but that's why we have the grain direction running like that to protect this little piece and keep him connected to the rest of the bird. Yep, little splinter in there, that's all right. Now that I've reduced the depth this here enough, I'm going to still take this deeper, but I need to spin him. I'm just going to trim that back. And to do that, I'm going to use a V-tool. You can see that's straight up and down. I've really tilted it. Spin him around. Get in this fuzzy section here, VTOL again. Curving around that. Dropping this edge here. I might try the big. It's getting a bit too big to fit in there. That's the problem with carving. Once you start, you just end up always realizing, oh, if I had something that was just two mils bigger, I could fit it in there and you'll become addicted to buying carving tools. Now here, because that's going to be really cumbersome to anchor off ball of my hand in here, I'm just resting my palm on the edge of my mounting block, just using my fingers to really, just really light pressure is needed in here because we're carving something really little. <sighs> on some timber that carves beautifully and is really holding its shape too, which is nice. Going to round this top edge here out. Again, bevel side up because I always do that if I can. Spin. Lots of spinning. Daggy bit in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, so I'm really getting a bit of shape happening there, as you can see. Next, I'm going to start to add some detail. So I'm just going to face him to me so I can understand things a little easier. Still need to cut in his belly. Now this large wing has two rows of feathers to really give it Might do them a bit closer together. I'm 
Or is that back wing? That just has one row. All right, so just with a VTOL, again, smaller the better for this. Just see I'm wiggling to really ensure that I follow that line. I'm drawing with pencil just to mark out his foot. You can see, I hope you can see, see that really dark, long, bit of grain there, it's getting quite stringy. And when I'm coming with it, it really wants to rip and pull through. And as I'm starting my cut with it, it's quite tricky for me to then curve away from it. So that's why I'm wiggling that tool so much. Neaten up in there a little. Those back ones done. Spin again. Big feather time. Really wiggling to get round that bend. Coming a bit deeper with the bigger feather. Really going, yep. Now, this second row of feathers is where I really need to control it. So really slowly trying to follow my pencil line. There we go. If your tools are blunt, you've basically got no hope of wheeling it at your control. It will just want to push and butt through the timber. So it's another proof that you can't escape the need for super sharp tools. And the tail, that should be a little easier. Yep. Good. Now I'm going to do a sort of a cheating undercut to define this tail. I'm just going to do it by twisting my V tool. That's straight up and down. I'm going to twist it to try and cut underneath this bit here. Like that, and then I just need to just draw it again. There we go. Giving him a little bit of a belly definition. Now, once you're at this stage, you can really fuss around as much as you like. If you're like me, you'll probably fuss around a lot. So our feathers currently, let me tilt that. So our feathers that we've got in here currently, they're just a V tool, but you can see they're ending sort of quite square there. So now I'm just gonna round those off. by bevel slide up, just coming on the back end of them. There we go. Same to the little tail feathers. Now 
and I don't need it on the back wing. We are pretty much there. You can really just faff around as much as you like to get a carving smoother where you've got sort of two facets meeting like that. You just want to take the peak off. So you just come with a slightly flatter gouge and just knock that peak off and then come with something else and knock that next peak off until you're completely smooth. I personally quite like facets. I think they add a lot to your work. I think it's really fun. Like right now, as I'm cleaning up, I'm keeping them in the direction that those feathers should be going. So they can really sort of add to it. Now next up, this still has very square edges all around here. So I'm just gonna undercut these and undercutting is kind of quite like it sounds. If I come straight down, I'm not gonna be cutting underneath the top of this. Whereas if I angle like this, I'm gonna be cutting underneath the top of that bird. I'm just gonna give it a real gentle undercut. You wanna be quite confident when you're undercutting. See, I can twist the tool around so now I'm working bevel slide into the tool to work with those shapes. So when you're undercutting, you wanna come in with confidence. Position your tool and just split straight down. If you sort of stop and start, you'll get sort of quite a messy finish. Cut around the back of that head. Now the exciting bit will be, can I remove it from the double-sided tape without breaking that wing off? For that large area, I'm just gonna use my larger one. I really wanna get in underneath this big wing as well. to really make that look like it's popping out. You can see I'm also cutting some of that double-sided tape. Sometimes when I've used the paper chuck method for securing, when I've done the undercutting, it's started to lift it for me. And that is just starting to split out there. So I'm going to be really careful and say that's what I wanted. Luckily, it's not damaged my actual carving. I can clean that up with a knife later. Cool. So... Pretty much carved. I'm just gonna get a little more knife, stab it in the eye, give that a bit of a twist. I might add tiniest hint of a beak. Now removing. This is the always nerve-wracking part. For double-sided tape, you can use solvent to dissolve the glue on the back. I'm gonna jump ahead and remove it like as if it was a paper chuck. So with the paper chuck, maybe you had your two layers of paper with glue in between them. You wanna slide a sharp knife, even a butter knife or a, you know, like a retractable Stanley blade or something in between those layers and sort of pull them apart. And then the, the one downside with that is the back of your work is left very um, covered in fuzzy paper. But here I'm just pushing that knife in and I'm just wiggling it. If you're carving something precious, please 
use like a alcohol solvent or something to dissolve that. He's going to get a bit of traction there. Gonna spin it and come from the other side. I'm being super careful of this wing because there's not a lot there. Yeah, we've got a little crack, but not to worry. And that's him removed. That's the back. You can just roll that off. Tape can be a little tricky to, if it's good tape, it's good double-sided tape, it will be a little tricky to remove. Um, if you do want to use double-sided tape, I've only ever had success with ones that are sort of foamy, if that makes sense. So double-sided tape that has foam is definitely the way you want to go. So just roll that off. Then I often like to sort of come in with a knife and just, just knock that back edge off the whole way around. Now, again, you're going to have to pay attention to grain direction, otherwise you'll split it out. See that? I've got a little, little opening there. Doesn't go right the way through. That's because I was too aggressive with my knife. Removing it, I will just put a little bit of glue in that, and that will be... Fine. I'm really just trying to remove a fair bit off the back of that wing. I made it tricky on myself because I've cracked it, so I can't really get in as much as I might like to. You can see I'm moving a fair bit off the back there. You want to come around and remove all your tool marks as well. Sorry, you guys can't even see that. We have our little bird. If you want to make it a necklace, you could put a drill a hole from sort of there to there, and you would hang like so. You could glue a brooch on the back, a brooch fastening on the back. Just let me clean up that bit, otherwise it's really going to annoy me. Cool. So once that's like that, if, like me, you have been too heavy-handed removing him and you've got a little split line there, fill that with glue, hold it back in place with masking tape, leave it 24 hours, and then oil it. But for the magic of the internet, we're going to jump straight to oiling today. I often just use organ oil, Danish oil, or well, the tongue oil as well is really good. Let's see, I've got hardly any left. I love oiling because you can just really watch it sort of come to life. So often I find though when you oil you see it in such better detail and you end up realizing areas that need a little bit more neatening so i'll often oil 
and then have to come back to something and just fix up little tiny bits. It's all right, won't damage your tools. Really get it in there. If you were to glue a brooch, <clears throat> you'd want to glue a brooch backing on it. Um, do that before you've oiled. And there you have it, little bird. I'll just lift this screen up and see if anyone has any questions. Hello. All righty, so that's how we've carved this little guy from just a scrap from the bottom of the bandsaw. Um, if you've got questions, please pop them in the chat now. If not, hold your peace for a month. When I'll be back next month on the Carb Tech channel streaming, um, please do me a huge favour and hit like on this video and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can head to my website, oliviaoconnor.com.au, and under the classes page right at the bottom there, there'll be a template so you can carve this little bird. If you do carve him and pop him, pop them on social media, if you hashtag Olivia O'Connor carving, then I'll be able to see your little birds as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.